Good morning. Welcome to Vampire Academy. We are reading chapter five. So let's begin. Or rather, they had been Strigoi. A regiment of guardians had hunted them down and killed them. If rumors were true, Christian had witnessed it all when he was very young. And although he wasn't Strigoi himself, some people thought he wasn't far off with the way he always wore black and kept to himself. Strigoi or not, I didn't trust him. He was a jerk, and I silently screamed at Lissa to get out of there. Not that my screaming did much good. Stupid one-way bond. What are you go doing here? She asked. Taking in, the in taking in the sights, of course. That chair with the tarp on it is particularly lovely this time of year. Over there, we have an old box full of the writings of the blessed and crazy Saint Vladimir. And let's not forget that beautiful table with no legs in the corner. Whatever. She rolled her eyes and moved toward the door, wanting to leave. But he blocked her away. Well, what about you? He taunted. Why are you here? Don't you have parties to go to or lives to destroy? Some of Lisa's old spark returned. Wow, that's hilarious. Am I like a rite of passage now? Go and see if you can piss off Lisa to prove how cool you are. Some girl I don't even know yelled at me today, and now I've got to deal with you. What what does it take to be left alone? Oh, so that's why you're up here, for a pipe party. This isn't a joke, I'm serious. I could tell Lisa was getting angry. It was trumping her early distress. He shrugged and leaned casually against the sloping wall. So am I. I love pipe par pity parties. I wish I'd brought the hats. What do you want to mope about first? How's it going? How's it going to take you a whole day to, to be popular and loved again? How you'll have to wait a couple of weeks before Hollister can ship out some new clothes? If if you spring for rush shipping, it might not be so long. Let me leave, she said angrily, this time, pushing him aside. Wait, he said, as she reached the door. The sarcasm disappeared from, from his voice. What um, what was it like? What was what like? She snapped, being out there, away from the academy. She hesitated for a moment before answering, caught off guard by what seemed to be genuine attempt at conversation. It was great. No one knew who I was. I was just another face, not Moroy, not Royal, not anything. She looked down at the floor. Everyone here thinks they know who I am. Yeah, it's kind of hard to outlive your past, he said bitterly. It occurred to Lisa at that moment, and me, to by default, just how hard it might be to be Christian. Most of the time, people treat him like he didn't exist, like he was a ghost. They didn't talk to or about him. They just didn't notice him. The stigma of his parents' crime was too strong, casting its shadow onto the entire Ozera family. Still, he'd pissed her off, and she wasn't about to feel sorry for him. Wait, is this your pity party now? He laughed almost approvingly. The room has been my pity party for a year now. Sorry, said Lisa snarkily. 
I was coming here before I left. I got a longer claim. Squatter rights. Besides, I have to make sure I stay near the chapel as much as possible so people know I haven't gone through Goy yet. Again, the bitter tone rang again. I used to always see you at Mass. Is that the only reason you go? To look good? Strugoi couldn't enter holy ground. More of that sinning against the world thing. Sure, he said. Why else go? For the good of your soul. Whatever, said Lisa, who clearly had a different opinion. I'll leave you alone then. Wait, he said again. He didn't seem to want her to go. I'll make you a deal. You can hang out here, too, if you tell me one thing. What? She glanced back at him. He leaned forward. Of all the rumors I heard about you yesterday, and believe me, I heard plenty, even if no one actually told them to me, there was one that didn't, didn't come up very much. They dissected everyone else. Why you left, what you did out there, why you came back, the specialization, what Rose said to me, blah, 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 and all that. No one... No one ever questioned the stupid story that Rose told about there being sorts of fringe humans who let you take blood. She looked away. I could feel her cheeks starting to burn. It's not stupid or a story. He laughed softly. I've lived with humans. My aunt and stayed away after my parents died. It's not that easy to find blood. When she didn't answer, he laughed again. It was Rose, wasn't it? She fed you. A renewed fear shot through both her and me. No one at the school could know about that. Karova and the guardians on the scene knew, but they kept the knowledge to themselves. Well, if that's not friendship, I don't know what is, he said. You can't tell anyone, she blurted out. This was all we needed. As I'd been reminded, feeders were vampire bite addicts. We accepted that as part of the life, but still looked down on them for it. For anyone else, especially a damper, letting Emory take blood from you was the worst. Was all from you was almost, well, dirty. In fact, one of the kinkiest, practically pornographic things a damper could do was let Amoroi drink blood during sex. Lisa and I hadn't had sex, of course, but we'd both known what others would think of me feeding her. Don't tell anyone, Lisa repeated. He stuffed his hands in his coat pockets, sat down on one of the crates. Who am I going to tell? Look, go grab the window seat. You can have it today and hang out for a while. If you're not still afraid of me. Ah, uh, hmm. She hesitated, studying him. He looked dark and surely lips curled in his sort of I'm such a rebel smirk. But he didn't look too dangerous. He didn't look strogoy. Gingerly, she sat down on the window seat, unconsciously rubbing her arms against the cold. Christian watched her, and a moment later, the air warmed up considerably. <coughs> Lisa met Christian's eyes and smiled, surprised she never noticed how icy blue they were, they, they were before. You specialize in fire. He nodded and pulled up a broken chair. Now we have luxury accommodations. I snapped out of the vision. Rose, Rose. Blinking, I focused on Dimitri's face. He was leaning toward me, his hands gripping my shoulders. I'd stopped walking. We stood in the middle of the quad, separating the upper school buildings. Are you all right? Ah, uh, yeah, I was. I was with Lisa. I put a hand on my forehead. I never had such a long or clear experience like that. I was in her head. Her head? 
Yeah, it's part of the bond. I didn't really didn't I didn't really feel like elaborating. Is she alright? Yes. She's alright. I hesitate. Was she alright? Christian Ozura had just invited her to hang out with him. Not good. There was coasting through the middle. And then there was tur turning to the dark side. But the feelings humming through our bond were no longer scared or upset. She was almost content, though still a little nervous. She's not in danger, I finally said. I hoped. Can you keep going? The hard, stoic warrior I met earlier was gone, just for a moment, and he actually looked concerned, truly concerned, feeling his eyes on me like that made something flutter inside of me, which was stupid, of course. I had no reason to get all goofy, just because the man was too good-looking for his own good. After all, he was an antisocial god, according to Mason, one who was supposedly going to leave me in all sorts of pain. Yeah, I'm fine. I went to the gym's dressing room and changed into the workout clothes someone had finally thought to give me after a day of practicing in jeans and a teacher. Gross. Lisa hanging out with Christian troubled me, but I shoved that Thought away for later, as my muscles informed me that they did not want to go through any more exercise today. So I suggested to Dimitri that maybe we should let me, let me off this time. He laughed, and I was pretty sure it was me, and not with me. Why is that funny? Oh, he said, his smile dropping. You were serious. Of course I was. Look. I've technically been awake for two days. Why do we have to start this training now? Let me go to bed, I whined. It's just one hour. He crossed his arms and looked down at me. His earlier concern was gone. He was all business now. Tough love. How do you feel right now? After the training you've done so far. I hurt like hell. You'll feel worse tomorrow, so so better better to jump in while you still feel not not as bad. What kind of logic is that? He re I retorted, but I didn't argue any more. As he led me into the weight room, he showed me the weights and reps he wanted me to do. Then sprawled in the corner with a battered western novel, some god. When I finished, he stood beside me and demonstrated a few cool-down stretches. How do you end up as Lisa's guardian, I asked. You weren't here a few years ago. Were you even trained at the school? He didn't answer right away. I got the feeling he didn't talk about himself very often. No, I attended the one in Siberia. Whoa. That's got to be the only place worse than Montana. A glint of something, maybe amusement, sparked in his eyes, but he didn't acknowledge the joke. After I graduated, I was guardian for Zeklos Lord. He was killed recently. His smile dropped. His face grew dark. They sent me here because they need extras on campus. When the princess turned up, they assigned me to her since I'd already be around. Not that it matters until she leaves campus. I thought about what he had said before. Some steroid killed the guy he was supposed to have been guarding. Did this lord die on your watch? No. He was with the uh, his other guardian. I was away. Hmm. Away. He fell silent, his mind obviously somewhat, uh, somewhere else. The Moroi expected a lot from us, but they did recognize that the Guardians were more or less only human. So go Guardians got pay and time off, like you'd get in any other job. 
Some hardcore guardians, like my mom, refused vacations, vowing never to leave the Moroi sides. Looking at Dimitri now, I had a feeling he might very well turn into one of those. If he had been away on legitimate leave, he could hardly blame himself for what happened to that guy. Still, he probably did anyway. I blame myself too if something happened to Lisa. Hey, I said suddenly, wanting to cheer him up. Did you help come up with a plan to get us back? Because it was pretty good. Brute force and all that. He arched an eyebrow curiously. Cool. I'd always wish I'd do that. You're complimenting me on that? Well, it was hell of a lot better than the last one they tried. Last one? Yeah, in Chicago. With a pack of PSI hounds. This was the first time we found you in, in Portland. I sat up from my stretches and crossed my legs. Hmm. I don't think I imagined PSI hounds. Who else could have sent them? The answer to Roy, maybe no one told you about it. Maybe, he said dismissively. I could tell by his face he didn't believe that. I returned to the novices' dorm after that. The Moroi students lived in the on the other side of the quad, closer to the commons. The living arrangements were partly based on convenience. Being here kept our, us novices closer to the gym and training grounds, but we also lived separately to accommodate the differences in Moroi and Dempner's lifestyles. Their dorm had almost no windows, aside from tinted ones that dimmed sunlight. They also had a special section where feeders always stayed on hand. The novice's dorm was built in a more open way, allowing more light. I had my own room because there were <coughs> so few novices, let alone girls. The room they'd given me was small and plain with a twin bed and a desk with a computer. My few belongings had been uh, spirited out of Portland and now sat in boxes around the room. I rummaged through them, pulling out a t-shirt to sleep in. I found a couple of pictures, as I did, one of Lisa and me at a football game in Portland, and another taken when I'd gone on vacation with her family a year before the accident. I set them on my desk and booed up the computer. Someone from tech support had hopefully given me a sheet with instructions for renewing my email account and setting up a password. I did both, happy to discover no one had realized that this would serve as a way for me to communicate with Lisa. Too, too tired. <sighs> too tired to write to her now. I was about to turn everything off when I noticed all re all re I already had a message from Janine Hathaway. It was short. Glad you're back. What you did was inexcusable. Love you too, Mom, I muttered, shutting it all down. When I went to bed afterward, I passed out before even hitting the pillow. And just as Dimitri had predicted, I felt ten times worse when I woke up the next morning. Lying there in bed, I reconsidered the perks of running away. Then I remembered getting my ass kicked and figured the only way to prevent that from happening again was to go endure some more of this, tr more of it this morning. My soreness made it all that much worse, but I survived before school practice with Dimitri and my subsequent classes without passing out or fainting. At lunch, I dragged Lisa away from Natalie's table early and gave her a Karova worthy lecture about Christians particularly chastising her for letting him know about our blood arrangement. If that got out, 
it did kill both of us socially, and I didn't trust him not to tell. Lisa had other concerns. You were in my head again, she explained. For that long? I didn't do it on purpose, I argued. It just happened, and that's not the point. How long do you hang up, hanging out with them afterward? Not that long. It was kind of fun. Well, you can't do it again. If people find out you're hanging out with him, they'll crucify you. I eyed her warily. You aren't like into him, are you? She scoffed. No, of course not. Good, because if you're going to go after a guy, steal Aaron back. He was boring, yes, but safe, just like Natalie. How come all the harmless people were so lame? Maybe that was the definition of safe, she laughed. Mia would claw my eyes out. We can take her. Besides, he deserves someone who doesn't shop at Gap Kids. Mm, that's funny. Rose, you've got to stop saying things like that. I'm just saying what you won't. She's only a year yo younger, said Lisa. She laughed. I can't believe you think I'm the one who's going to get us in trouble. Smiling as we strolled toward class. I gave her a sidelong glance. Aaron does look pretty good, though, huh? She smiled back and avoided my eyes. Yeah, pretty good. Oh, you see? You should go after him. Whatever. I'm fine being friends now. Friends who used to stick their tongues down each other's throats. She rolled her eyes. Fine. I, I let my teasing go. Let Aaron stay in the nursery school. Just so long as you stay away from Christian. He's dangerous. You're overreacting. He's not going strigoi. He's a bad influence. She laughed. You think I'm in danger of going strigoi? She didn't wait for my answer. Instead, pushing ahead to open the door to our science class. Standing there, I uneasily replayed her words and then followed a moment later. When I did, I got to see royal power in action. A few guys with giggling, watching girls were messing with a gangly looking Roy. I didn't know him very well, but I knew he was poor and certainly not royal. A couple of his tormentors were air magic users, and they blown the papers off his desk and were pushing them around the room on currents of air while the guy while the guy tried to catch them. My instincts urged me to do something, maybe go smack one of the air users. But I couldn't pick a fight with someone who annoyed with everyone who annoyed me, and certainly not a group of royals, especially when Lisa needed to stay off their radar. So I could only give them a look of disgust as I walked to my desk. As I did, a hand caught my arm. Jess? Mm. Hey, I said jokingly. Fortunately, he didn't appear to be participating in the in the torture lesson. Hands off the merchandise. He flashed me a smile but kept his hand on me. Rose, tell Paul about the time you started the fight in Mrs. Miss Carp's class. I cocked my head toward him, giving him a playful smile. I started lots of fights in her class. The one with the hermit crab and the gerbil. I laughed, recalling it. Oh, yeah, it was a hamster, I think. I just dropped it in the crab's tank, and they were both worked up from being so close to me. So they went at it. Paul, a guy sitting nearby, whom I really didn't know, chuckled too. He had transferred last year. Apparently, he hadn't heard of this. Who won? I looked at Jess quizzically. I don't remember, do you? No. I just remember Carp freaking out. He turned toward Paul. Man, you should have seen this messed up teacher we used to have. He used to think people were after her and would go off on stuff that didn't make any sense. She was nuts. He used to wander the campus while everyone was asleep. I smiled tightly. 
like I thought it was funny. Instead, I thought back to Mrs. Carpenter, surprised to be thinking about her for the second time in two days. Jess was right. She had wandered campus a lot when she still worked here. It was pretty creepy. I'd run into her once unexpectedly. I'd been climbing out of the dorm window to go hang out with some people. It was after hours and we were all supposed to be in our, door, in our rooms fast asleep. Such escape tactics were regular practice for me. I was good at them. But I fell that time. I had a second floor room and I lost my grip. About halfway down, sensing the gr ground rushing up toward me, I tried desperately to grab hold of something to slow my fall. The building's rough stone tore into my skin, causing cuts. I was too preoccupied to feel. I slammed into the grassy earth back first, getting the wind knocked out of me. Bad form, Rose Rosemary. You should be more careful. Your instructors would be disappointed. Peering through the tangle of my hair, I saw Mrs. Carp looking down at me. The amused look on her face, pain, in the meantime, shot through every part of my body. Ignoring it as best I could, I clambered to my feet. Being in class with crazy Carp while surrounded by other students was one thing. Standing outside alone with her was an entirely different matter. She always had an eerie, distracted gleam in her eye that made my skin break out in goosebumps. There was also now a high likelihood she dragged me off to Garoba for detention. Scarier still. Instead, she just smiled and reached for my hands. I flinched but let her take them. She uh, tissed when she saw the scrapes, tightening her grip on them. She frowned slightly. A tingle burned my skin, laced with all sorts of pleasant buzz, and then the wounds closed up. I had a brief sense of dizziness. My temperature spiked. The blood disappeared, as did the pain in my hip and leg. Gasping, I jerked my hands away. I had seen a lot of Moroi magic, but not, but never, anything like that. What, what did you do? She gave me that weird smile again. Go back to your dorm, Rose. There are bad things out here. You never know what's following you. I was still staring at my hands, but I looked back at her and for the first time noticed scars on the sides of her forehead, like nails had dug into them. She winked. I won't tell on you if you don't tell on me. I jumped back to the present, unsettled by the memory of that bizarre night. Jess, in, them, in the meantime, was telling me about a party. You've got to slip your leash tonight. We're going to we're going up to that spot in the woods around eight thirty. Mark Mark got some weed. I sighed wistfully, regret replacing the chill I'd felt over the memory of Miss Carp. Can't slip that leash. I'm with the Russian jailer. He let go of my arm, looking disappointed, and ran around through his bronze colored hair. Yeah. Not being able to hang out with him was a damn shame. I really could have, I really would have to fix that someday. Can't you ever get off for good behavior, he joked. I gave him what I hoped was a seductive smile as I found my seat. Sure, I called over my shoulder. If I was ever good. All right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And that's where we stop. And tomorrow we will continue reading 
Vampire Academy, and we will be starting on Chapter 6. All right. Now, time for a little self-promotion time. You know what I loved most about the 80s and 90s movies? They had three common themes. They were creepy. They were scary. And at some time, there, and there were parts that were complete horrifying. But they also had humor. And that is the formula of Vampire Reduce. It's a creepy and scary horror mystery adventure with just a little bit of romance. And it's called Vampire Juice. Amanda and Sean stumble upon a mysterious can of juice while searching for Halloween costumes at a local store. Despite being kicked out by the sales clerk, they become obsessed with uncovering the truth behind the strange drink. With the help from some local bullies, they sneak back into the store through a crypt in the graveyard. Yeah, a crypt in the graveyard only to find themselves in the midst of a spine-chilling adventure. Okay, if that something interests you, my link is in the bio. Vampire Juice, thanks for watching, and we will continue reading Vampire Academy tomorrow. Thank you.